welcome back to this channel. The manufacturing and assembly process of giant diesel engines is certainly fascinating to watch, and this process takes a considerable amount of time. Additionally, it involves assembling the components of the world's largest diesel engine one by one. So relax and enjoy this video. Large vessels, such as cruise ships or cargo ships, undoubtedly have very large engines to propel the ship's hull and power the facilities on board. In addition to being used for ship engines, these large engines are also utilized for other functions such as production machinery in the manufacturing industry and power generation and are employed in many commercial enterprises. The following machines are among the largest in the world, weighing hundreds or even thousands of tons. Some even hold the status of the world's most powerful diesel engine or ship engine. In the process of manufacturing and assembling these machines, it certainly requires a significant amount of time, with the required duration reaching tens of thousands of working hours to complete a single unit of the machine. And here is a brief overview of the manufacturing and assembly process of these giant machines in various applications whether on ships or for other purposes. Diesel engines are divided into two types, namely four-stroke diesel engines and two-stroke diesel engines. Most large ships use both four-stroke and two-stroke diesel engines, as the use of two-stroke engines is considered more advantageous than using four-stroke diesel engines. In large ships, two-stroke engines are used as the main propulsion, while four-stroke engines are employed for power generation. Some of the main reasons for using two-stroke engines for primary propulsion in large ships include the efficient combustion of low-grade fuel with low emissions. The power-to-weight ratio is much higher than that of four-stroke engines. For the same engine weight, a two-stroke engine produces the significant power required to propel large ships. With the use of two-stroke engines, vibrations and noise are significantly reduced, allowing for a conducive working environment in the engine room. It also enhances the stability of the ship. The giant-sized engines include the first one, the Mac 8 M32C. The Mac 8 M32C is a diesel engine manufactured by Mac, a subsidiary of Caterpillar. This diesel engine is designed to be installed on ferry boats operating in Greece. The production of this engine was initiated by a ferry operator who decided to replace the 30-year-old engines on one of their vessels with two new Mac 8 M32C diesel main propulsion engines. The vessel is equipped with two diesel engines with a cylinder diameter of 320 mm and a propeller speed of 150 rpm. This diesel engine consumes fuel at 178 grams per kilowatt hour. It has a total length of 14 meters and a weight of up to 120 tons. The diesel engine can reach a maximum speed of 13 knots. The next largest engine is the 12X92DF. Owned by Win GD and built by CSSC CMD in Lin Gang, Shanghai, this engine holds the official Guinness World Records and title as the most powerful auto cycle engine ever manufactured and commercially available. The engine measures 26 meters in length and 13.5 meters in height, equivalent to a four story building. It's not surprising considering its pistons are as tall as 6 meters and each weighs 5.5 tons. The engine was chosen to propel nine advanced mega container ships for CMA CGM, transporting goods between Asia and Europe as the world's first and largest LNG powered container ship with a capacity of 23,000 TUs. The manufacturing of ship engines essentially follows a nearly identical process. It begins with the most crucial and largest component of the ship engine, which is the crankcase. Despite the ton weight of the engine block, it still needs to be crafted with precision to widths and tolerances of hundreds of millimeters. The manufacturing process of the crankcase begins with the casting process, carried out within a steel or iron foundry. 
the melted steel is then poured into a large mold that has been designed accordingly and matches the predetermined size. This is how the raw component looks when it arrives from the casting. It takes seven separate machining operations at three machining centers to transform the raw casting into the finished engine block. The machining process is entirely automated. The component surfaces are ground under a flood of cooling lubricant, with each crankcase discarding about 300 kilograms and even more chips during the machining process. This process aims to refine the surface of the engine block, resulting in a smooth and polished finish. In addition to the crankcase, another essential component is the crankshaft. The crankshaft is essentially the backbone of the internal combustion engine. It is responsible for the precise operation of the engine and the conversion of linear motion into rotational motion. The crankshaft must have very high fatigue strength and wear resistance to ensure a long lifespan. In the crankshaft manufacturing process, a suitable sized billet undergoes heat treatment to the required forging temperature. Subsequently, it is sequentially forged or pressed into the required shape by pressing the billet between a pair of molds under high pressure. If there is a complex shape or extreme deformation desired, more than one set of molds is needed to accomplish the task and complete the proper forming. The forging process in crankshaft manufacturing has advantages over other methods in achieving the desired crankshaft shape. A forged crankshaft is stronger and more durable. Forging ensures higher strength of parts and components, and because the heat treatment departs from product quality such as durability, resilience, and strength, crankshafts made by skilled forging manufacturers are reliable and cost-effective due to a more controlled process and inspection. After all parts of the ship's engine are completed, these components will then be assembled to form the complete ship engine. It starts with the arrangement of the bed plate, which is the bottommost part of the engine that supports the engine's weight. Therefore, it is the most heavily loaded part of the engine. It is mounted on the foundation and secured to the floor using anchor bolts for stability. The bed plate must be strong enough to bear the weight of the engine and sufficiently flexible to bend when the ship's hull flexes during monopolization and declination of the vessel. After the bed plate is placed, the next step is to install the crankshaft, which is placed inside the bed plate. This part is responsible for converting the reciprocating motion of the engine piston into the rotational motion of the propeller. The propeller transforms this torque into axial thrust, propelling the ship. The crankshaft undergoes various loads that vary from the piston, combustion, propeller, and flywheel. Therefore, it must be designed in such a way as to accommodate these cyclic loads. The next component is the installation of the A-frame. As its name implies, the A-frame resembles the letter A. At the bottom, it rests on the bed plate, and at the top, it supports the cylinder block. The A-frame is erected above each transverse girder of the bed plate. Compound joints are added between the A-frame and the bed plate to enhance sealing. The A-frame and the spaces between the transverse girders of the bed plate form enclosed compartments, isolating each engine unit. These enclosed spaces create the engine room for the machinery. After the engine room has been installed, the next step is the installation of connecting rods. The connecting rod, or con rod, is attached to the crankshaft. The main function of the connecting rod is to establish a connection between the piston and the crankshaft to transmit power. After completing the installation of the connecting rod, proceed with the installation of the cylinder block. This cylinder block is located above the A-frame, 
which functions to accommodate various engine parts such as the scavenger chamber, stuffing box, jacket cooling water chamber, and cylinder cavity for the cylinder liner. The cylinder head is the uppermost part of the engine structure and houses various instrument and monitoring mounts such as the fuel valve, or fuel injector, starting air valve, cylinder relief valve, indicator valve, exhaust valve, and etc. It also has a cavity for cooling water circulation. And the last is the installation of a turbocharger. A turbocharger is a forced induction device consisting of a turbine and a compressor or blower. Both are arranged in such a way as to allow a supply of pressurized fresh air into the combustion chamber.